Hello to all my people, and if you're watching live, checking us out on YouTube, or listening on your favorite podcast provider, you are most definitely my people. Welcome to a very, very special edition of Botch Bots and Share Shots. I am your host, a chef by trade and a mark by choice. I am the Will Gray, and joining me tonight, first, because I'm a Southern gentleman, she is the first lady of prolific wrestling. She is the pro wrestling, our women's champion, the pro wrestling, magic women's champion, respectfully. What that Larry do? She is ruthless, Lala. Lala, did how you, are you? Did you did you say pro wrestling magic world women's champion? World women's champion. My guy, there we go. World we go. women's there champion. Go. Ah, feeling good. Uh, uh, it's always good to see you, Will. You know, um, last time, you know, we had a nice good interview. We kicked it like it was nineteen ninety nine, and ever since then, we just been like the besties. Uh, so, uh, it's always good to, uh, be back on and hang out with you. So once again, thank you for the introduction and thank you for, uh, letting us come on once again. Absolutely. And directly to the right of Lala on the screen, he's been on separately before you came on and now we're on together because you know, those circles up overlap everywhere. He is the conqueror of colonizer. He's one half of reality air. He is Mr. BW top 500. He is the man monster. The big D, Tiberius Asante. T, how yo. are you, brother? Yo, that was a dope. Yo, Will, right here. Will, right here. <laughs> That's how it is. Yo, that was good <laughs> shit, Will. Will came with it. That's what I do. You know, that's how it is. From here on, the intros are always going to be fire, and then it's downhill from here. You never know what I'm going to do. So, <laughs> no. But uh, it's been an exciting year for both of you. It's been roughly a year since I had both of you on. So I'm going to ask a really easy question for you. What's new and exciting in 2023? What's probably the most exciting thing either one of you have done since the last time I sat down with either of you? Um, would you would you like to go first, though? Yeah, I'll take the floor a little bit. All right. So the most exciting thing that has happened in 2023, besides, of course, getting with my baby, Rufus Lala, um, was winning and uniting not only the one CW Tag Team Championship, but the ESPW Tag Team Championship, and taking them and unifying to become the first undisputed one CW Tag Team Champion with my partner Trey, Bad Bad Banks, Trey Bailey, my cousin. Man, it's just it's been amazing that I could do it with family. Um, the journey's been phenomenal, and I just. I can't even wait. I, it's, it's been crazy. Oh, yeah. And, of course, wrestling O'Shea twice in one year has also been amazing, too. That's, 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 that's helped a lot of things. So it's, it's been a good 2023, man. It's, it's been a blessing. Sure. He's a beast. O'Shea's a big guy. Oh. Lala, you tangled with O'Shea as well, didn't you? Twice. It's CZW, right? You guys uh, locked up. Uh, first time first time was at BCW. It was actually uh, at my request. I requested to wrestle O'Shea Edwards for my birthday, January the 1st. And that was the first time we wrestled each other. And the second time was here recently when we ran it back at a CCW. So, T, a little bit more into that. Reality, are you and Trey, y'all have been kind of taking off. Y'all have won gold. Y'all kind of in that picture everywhere y'all end up going. What's that shift been like for you going from a singles competitor to being a tag team star? I'm not going to lie. At first, it was uh, it was a major change because I was so used to just, you know, doing things on my own, doing things my own way. But then when you work with a partner, it's like, okay, how can we take the things that we both know and somehow formulate into something to where we're not looking awkward, uh, to where everything is – it's clicking to where it actually looks good. And yeah, and it took a while, you know, it took, you know what I mean? Some ups and downs, but then when it clicked, it clicked. And then we just kept riding that, that way. Lala. Yes. Since, since the last time you and I had a chat, um, you took your lariat abroad. You've been to England now, you've been to Germany now. Let's talk about that. What was it like for you to, uh, to respectfully hand out lariats in you know foreign countries. Yo, uh, it was man, it was fucking unbelievable. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even gonna lie to you. Um, um, I anybody who knows me know that I'm massively hard on myself, you know, for so many reasons. And uh, 
everybody who knows me knows like you know how my health is and how we 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 we're constantly in in out in out in out you know um a constant heal so um even though like i wasn't at a hundred percent of how i wanted to be over there like it was still something that was amazing every european country that i set foot in i showed every opponent what that larry did like no questions asked and it was a beautiful thing um and then to even make the championships that i took over there uh world championships and to defend them uh successfully and to come back it, it's it's man if you like i once i got back i had to like reset it took me a while um i i, I really thought that when i came back it was gonna be like two weeks you know, then I like, you know, hey, I'm good. But like, it took me a while to kind of get back into tradition over here and back into like what I'm used to because over there it was way different, man, way different. And so like um, to go over there and represent Prolific and also represent the United States as well as CZW um, and to represent it to the highest of the fullest and uh, to get to wrestle in Uber housing, um, that the the Turnburn Hall of uh, Uber Housing. I oh my God, like I cried when I got there. Uh, historic venue is is a place that I've always wanted to wrestle, and I saw and like to to, to be able to wrestle with um, WXW. Like once again, man, I am massively honored. WXW, uh, PCW UK, um, and I can't forget Pro Wrestling Holland. Uh, definitely like massively honored to be able to go to all these places and wrestle and learn uh, to the best size that I could. And just mind blowing, honestly, uh, very honored, very blessed to have that opportunity to do that. And I uh, can't wait to do it again. So you and I were talking before coming from Texas, living in New York, traveling abroad. Now that's a, that's a whole lot of ground to make when you wrestle all over the States, you know, and you and I have talked about it in the past where, you know, the territories, those skeletons are still there where you, you know, New York crowd feels one way you come down here. Memphis feels one specific way, Georgia, Texas, you know, that AWA, there's those little skeletons of the territories. But when you got to Europe, what were those European fans like? How did they react to that? You know, that Lariat, how did it feel working with those European fans? Yo, the Lariat is universal, baby. You feel me? Uh, um, it speaks the same language overseas. It speaks the same language, whether it's in Japan. Like, like no matter where, no matter what country, no matter what city, no matter what state, this Lariat is universal. Just like anybody that I wrestle, my Lariat is rated E for everyone. Respectfully. Respectfully. So this is a question for both of you. T having tag team gold, Lala pretty much choosing whatever title you want at that point. You just go, okay, I want this belt now, or I want this belt now. You just choose what you want. Um, <laughs> having, having, <laughs> having that opportunity to be those people now and hold gold, what's it like at this point in y'all's career? Y'all have both progressed some. You've both grown some. It's been a year. But what's it like now having a chance to hold gold in your careers? Maybe I'll let you go first. Uh, you let me go first. Oh, you being all nice. Oh, stop it, you. Um, it's 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 so funny because uh, I still like right now. I believe I have four belts. I believe so. Three, four. Okay, so technically I have four, but one of them right now is you know like you know be back for lunch later on. So. I guess you won't, you won't, you won't count that. One. I mean, but I still have the belt, you know what I mean? But so it's four. Mm. Um, you know what? That's not here to there. Um, coming up in the business at first and not understanding, uh, the reason of why I wanted the belt so badly, uh, was something that, that I wanted to learn and understand for myself of what becoming a champion means to myself. You feel me? And knowing what I know now, uh, man, uh, once again, uh, if I could go back, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of tweaks, you know what I mean, that I would give my younger self and be like, yo, listen to me here, my guy, okay? Okay? This is all I need you to do when you're good. 
we're good. You know what I mean? Um, so I always get into an argument uh, with a lot of people sometimes. Um, and sometimes I, I, I get into debates about what a championship belt means. Uh, a lot of the people that I know just says, you know, it's just a prop. A lot of people just says, hey, you know, it's just a piece of metal. Um, for me, and I, I, I say it again, for me, so can't nobody come and say, oh, well, she says this is no. For me, um, a belt is like a solidification that the company that you're wrestling for trusts you to be the face of their company. And knowing that mm -hmm. you're not going to get caught up in stupid shit. And knowing that you're going to hold this belt up to the highest of prestige and defend it anywhere against anybody and still hold it up and gradually, gracefully and willingly take that target upon your back and want to smoke from anybody, you know, um, anybody can hold the belt. That's why you have belt holders. You know what I'm saying? And you have champions. Um, for me, it, it's if I'm a champion, that means you're going to get tired of seeing my face constantly on social media because I'm going to keep constantly telling you how I'm the champion. You can't beat me. If I'm the champion, that means anytime I walk into a building, no matter where I'm at, you're going to see it because I'm going to represent the company that I am the face of no matter where I go. It's going to be so redundant and like over, like you're going to feel like you're watching a rerun, but that's okay because you're going to keep watching my face until you find somebody that's going to whoop my ass is going to be throwing me. But considering that that's not going to happen no time soon, get a look at me. Look at me. Look. <laughs> look at me. You feel me? There has never been a championship that I've had that I never, that I, that I didn't put prestige on. Any champion that I have ever lost, I promise you, I have always left major shoes to fill. Point blank and period. So having it now and knowing what I know from now, because next month would be 21 years that I've been in this business. And knowing what I know now, it's, it's having a belt means more than just, hey, look what I have. You feel me? Like when when you having a company tell you that they appreciate you is a lot different from having a company show you that they appreciate you. So when you get a company that trusts you and lets you be put front and center to represent as a face of the company, you don't take that lightly. You take that with a grain of salt. And so for me, being a champion now is something that I'm enjoying. Like I've 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 gotten to the point to where I've stopped trying to get this validation that I felt I so needed, you know, from other people and to prove certain things to myself because I still need things that I have to prove to myself. But at the same time, I don't need anybody's validation. Because at the end of the day, other people's validation is isn't what got me here. Other people's opinions is not what got me here. Me busting my ass and constantly not giving up and constantly having positive people in my corner is what got me here. So that's my. I'm sorry I went long way to my apologies. But you, don't ever, you don't ever have to apologize. The whole goal no. is to my no. whole job is to get you to say as much as possible. <laughs> See, sir, I apologize because now you have to follow her. What was how's it, how is it for you in 2023 holding gold? <laughs> um, it was amazing. <laughs> Finally, seeing uh, the fruits of my labor pay off after working with one CW for so long, and and trusting us with the tag titles just showed that they, they trusted us and uh, they didn't know we wouldn't like she said don't get into no dumb shit and can stay out of the drama. Which if you ever if you notice, <laughs> I don't get involved in the job. <laughs> Um, it, it was an amazing feeling, especially you know, uh, being as that it was so organic. Seeing as how me and Bad Bad Banks came up together, trained at the chicken farm with the Briscoes, and were able to come together and make something magical as the reality is. 
Um, I couldn't be more happier to have such a partner, to have a family, a cousin, you know what I'm saying, that's watching your back. Who's, who's better than family to watch your back, you know what I'm saying? So for that, that's, that's it's an amazing thing. And it just felt good knowing that 1CW was able to be like, you know what, let's finally – give this man a chance. Trent, we already know Bad Banks has been a 1CW heavyweight champion. He's been a tag team champion on multiple platforms. So, it was like them seeing if I can roll with the big dogs. Could I keep up with Trey? Could I be trusted to hold a tag team goal? And it just felt good to be able to say, hey, I can do this. I told you I could do this. Just give me the chance. And I, and I won't let you down. And I haven't let him down. Um, we're never going to get those belts back. I just got to put that in there because, yeah, yeah, it's, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. Lala, I noticed you got up to grab something. Yeah, because, like, I, I really just sat up here and said a lot of stuff. And it was almost a walking fucking contradiction until I actually went and got them. Uh, so, to press <laughs> 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 Like, yo, I'm so sorry. Uh, like, <laughs> there's my 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 pro wrestling R, and then the pro wrestling magic. You know, got the got world title. Pro oh, girl, wrestling too, magic world women's championship, and then you got the pro wrestling R women's championship. You know, just. Al in the chat says she loves a white strap on a belt. It makes the what's belt. Up, what's, up, what's up, good? She look with the Just covered in gold. I do agree. Mm-hmm. I love the way a good white strap looks. Like Are that's you absolutely. Stopping? Yeah. Kids, stop that. <laughs> no, like I, I, I love the white straps. Like that's one thing that like I really went crazy for, because uh, I've had pretty much almost every type of strap and like the white ones and the purple ones get me because purple is my favorite color so like i really lose it uh oh my god just colorful belts make me feel warm and fuzzy on the inside okay (laughs) all right one more question before we get to the here and the now everything that's happening the reason why we're here so to speak you guys the last time you were here i wasn't asking this question yet this is this is the the question you guys it's not five random i'm not going to ask you about hot dogs or any stupid shit like that this is this is it okay so you're going to go back we're going to hop in the way back machine we're going to go back to day one match one what advice do you give rookie lala what advice do you give rookie t i don't care who goes first i will call names but <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, babe. That's on you. Go ahead. Okay, if I can go back to that younger me, that guy that had the chip on his shoulder, who had an ego, and just didn't want to listen to anybody, I would tell that young man to slow down, get the chip off your shoulder, drop the ego, and let these people help you. Because at the end of the day, if they're trying to help you, just accept it. Because it's not going to help, and we're going to run along and do some bumps and bruises along the way. That's exactly what I would tell my younger self. And to love and to enjoy what they're doing. Have fun. Lala, same question. Yo, um, how dare you? I I, I know I should have went first because now it's going to seem like I'm copying off of your answer. Uh, now, nah, um, for me, um, it would be to not be so hard on yourself, man. Um, And to understand that it's okay to be a out-of-box person. Um, It's okay to go to the beat of your own drum. It's okay to do what makes you happy and to have fun. And to just know that you're not in this to compete with anybody. You're in this to compete with yourself to be better than what you are the day before. Always well said. There's really no right or wrong answer to that. And it's very, it's very inspiring because you hear so many different versions. And that's one of the great things about that question is everybody has a different story in the business. You know, nobody has the same blueprint from person to person. Okay, guys, easy stuff's done. Now we're going to get to the real side of it. Okay. Why everybody's here. We're going to drink a little tea. We're going to spill a little tea. Let's talk about it. Okay. Everybody's seen it on Twitter. 
Everybody knows what's going on. Lala. T. Will. How exactly, <laughs> how exactly did you guys meet? Let's start there. You want to take this one, babe? Yeah. Uh, okay, I got you. Uh, I, I said if I had to do this, I was going to do my best to not say not one curse word uh, as I try to explain this because I've got it gives me e. upset. You but, can say but, whatever you, know, you want. I know, I know we do, but still, you know, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to work on my, <laughs> trying to work on, you know, my not cussing so much. Um, <laughs> so here's the thing. Uh, I've known Tiberius for like, you know, um, I would say to probably say a good four or five months, only because there's been a couple of shows that you know we were on, and it was always a passing thing, you know. Oh, what up, nephew? You know what I'm saying? Like, what up, auntie? You know what I mean? All right, go kill it. You know, he'll ask me uh, if I'm there. Hey, do you mind watching the match? Uh, sure, no problem. You know, I'll give critiques, you know, and then I call it a day. Um, and that's pretty much how it was. Uh, and then lo and behold, uh, Pro Wrestling R's two year anniversary show. Um, it's originally supposed to have been, um, Isaiah Wolf versus Thick Daddy, Andy Brown. Uh, unfortunately, Andy got hurt. So they end up putting Tiberius in that slot. <sighs> then, for the first time ever, there's a lucky seven scramble, a women's lucky seven scramble, where the winner will win a contract to where they can cash it in whenever to get that title shot. And there's one person. Well, there's six other people besides me. There was Reza Clark. There was Salem. There was Big Daddy Adriana. There was Karen Bam Bam. There was Nevaeh Chantel. Uh, there was Harleen Lopez. And uh, myself. Um, and for some reason, my best friend, and leader of prolific thought, I'm gonna say this again, he thought in his mind that Big Daddy Adriana was the biggest threat that I've ever had to deal with within the 20 years that I've ever been in the business, apparently. Um, and decided that he was going to break down her walls and wear her down. So come pro wrestling R. Um, it'd be an easy victory for me. And then uh, Big Daddy Adriana on his side, on their side, reality era, thought that it would be a great idea to go and throw her Samoan tacos at my best friend Isaiah Wolf because she was going to wear him down to help Tiberius be Wolf for the belt. Now, within this whole situation, guess who these two heathens didn't talk to? The both of us. It was just, I have a plan. Trust me.